All right, guys. So today I wanted to talk to you about loss. And I've been meaning to do this for a little while and I just never really had the time to sit down and, you know, get into that mind state. But I have a few hours free today. So I feel like we'd do a little bit of a story time video, share to you guys a few things, a few difficult things that I've been going through recently and that I've been through in the past. And the reason why I want to do this is because when we were giving out those boards recently in London for that other video that we did, and um, one of the kids that I gave the board to said to me, he like, he, he kind of like opened up a little bit and told me that his mum had basically, I think she just died of cancer, which is a pretty heavy thing to hear. And I really, really relate to that because I don't know if you guys know, but my mum right now is going through that exact same thing and this isn't going to be one of them videos where I sit and cry on camera because that's just not who like that's not the kind of person that I am there'll probably be very limited cuts but I feel like these stories need to be shared so that people that watch them and that are in similar situations can be like shit man like I'm not the only person in this hole that I'm currently residing in so that's what I want to do today that's what I'm going to do right now so a few of you guys, a few keener viewers of mine will know that when I was younger, my sister, my sister passed away from a drug overdose. I, well, at least we believe that was the cause. It was hard to tell in the autopsy, but yeah, essentially it was a drug overdose that ended her life. And that was when I was 14. And I've seen a lot of loss since then. Like the theme of this video is definitely going to be talking about how to deal and how I deal with loss. But yeah, I lost my sister when I was like 14. I had to go in and view the body, which by the way, I never recommend anyone do that because that is the final image that sits in my mind every time I think of my sister. So unless you're doing it for the reason that I did, which was because my mum didn't want to do it. It was too emotional for her. So I was the one that volunteered. My brother, who is like 15 years older than me, 14 years older than me, he uh, didn't live anywhere near us. So it was impossible for him to do it. I was really the only one that had to do it apart from my mum. So at 14, I went in there and I saw that. And while going through that situation, I still credit to this day for toughening me up like a lot harder than I was beforehand. Like I was a very much like, a, like, I would say as a kid, I was quite weak mentally. Like I would get upset easily at small things and I wouldn't be able to like conduct myself properly in like certain social situations. I was very awkward, very weird, but I credit like these hardships as what gets me through these kind of situations, you know? So I feel like that was the first real hurdle I ever came across. And now, since then, I've seen like one of my best friends from when I was a kid, like he uh, took his own life because of like a situation with a girl, but we were all like heavily doing drugs at this time. Like this was a heavy, heavy time in my life. Like I'll put a trigger warning in here because I'm going to get into a bit of the details here, but it was basically when I was probably about 23, 22, something like that. There was a story that came out on like the local news and it was like, guy found hanging from tree. So we were all like, shit, man, that's really, really peak, blah, blah, blah. Peak meaning bad in like the UK slang. But yeah, that is a, that was whack. And then like a couple of hours later, another friend of mine walks to the skate park where I was at with my boys. And he says, yeah, that was Cam which is like one of my closest oldest friends. You weren't like super close when it happened. We were definitely close up until that point. About three months before we'd had a fallout, but we had made up since then. We just weren't on like this close, close friends term like we were when we were kids. He was my first ever friend. And to see something like that happen, man, it's deep. Obviously, I already had the experience from when I was younger with my sister and all this, that and the other. So I kind of knew how I was going to deal with it, but it doesn't take away the impact of something like that hitting you at all. But now, like the situation that I'm in now is like one unlike any other, because before it was just like one day they were gone and now they're not. Now with my mum being diagnosed with cancer, it's like she was diagnosed maybe what, like two years ago at this point, And it's just been like a slow deterioration. It would start, I say it started off like quite bad, got considerably better and then her partner died and then it just slowly because he had cancer at the same time so like double whammy right he died like last year and once he died like the the quality of life just went down and down and down and down and down and down and they weren't together for like a super long time or whatever but to see that happen to the person you're with and you going through the same situation it's kind of it's kind of tough to see man like in a lot of these other cases one day they're there one day they're not 
and then but this one i'm like literally seeing it happen day by day by day getting worse and worse and worse and about about a week ago now my mom calls me and she says the doctor i mean we knew things weren't good but the doctor calls her and he's like or they're not called her but they were in a in a appointment and he says you've got three months to live and like my mom told me this and i always try to be the one that's like oh, right, we knew this was coming. How can we make this situation the best it can possibly be? I've always said that if I had a superpower, it would be learning how to turn a bad situation into a good one. So I've always tried to do that in my life. Now in this one, you can't necessarily take a, this and make it a good situation, but what you can do is make the best with what you've got. So I've just been doing all I can for my mum at the moment, just going over there, making sure she's all right, walking the dog, getting any medication she needs from the local pharmacy and just doing it day by day. But seeing it, man, seeing it is kind of tough. And just know that if you or anyone that you know is going through these situations, like for me personally, I think you should deal with it on a case by case basis. Like I'm not the kind of person that needs people to like come check up on them. I'm very much like I grew up as an only child, although my siblings were like super, super older than me. So I never lived with them when I was a kid. But yeah. So I basically grew up as an only child. I've always dealt with all these things on my own, whether it being like my dad leaving my own drug addictions. Like every time I go through these situations, I tend to do it within myself. And then when I come out the other side, I always feel much better for it because I'm never relying on someone else to make me feel better. So my recommendation would be for you that if you're ever in this kind of situation, you kind of like introspectively look inside yourself, try and spend time with yourself. Don't constantly surround yourself with people because then you're never going to figure out how you truly feel behind closed doors. Because remember, there's three kinds of people that we are, right? There's the kind of person you show to strangers, the kind of person that you show to your friends and the kind of person that only you know behind closed doors and that's the one that needs to heal for the rest of them to heal on that as like the skill tree of healing you know <laughs> little video game reference for you there but anyway so if you're going through like a tough time like this just honestly look inside yourself try and find the strength to be strong in front of the people that are around you because it's tough man it's tough it's always going to be tough it's not about being like oh yeah i'm the hard guy this that and the other i'm not trying to cry in front of anybody blah 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 Sometimes you have to do those things, man. It's part of life. Like you can't just go around being like, oh, everything's so good all the time. You have to deal with the bad situations just as much as you have to deal with the good ones. That is just the dichotomy of the world. You can't have a plant at like, you can't have a flower in full bloom if one day that same flower isn't gonna be shriveled and like dust. So make the best of a bad situation is the moral of the story. Spend every moment with your loved ones and Spend every moment you can with the loved ones that need you and that reciprocate that feeling and try not to waste time with the ones that don't do that for you and wouldn't do that in the same situation. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, like my main thing is that I just don't want to regret anything. Like if it came to it and I kind of just like left my mom to be on her own or just with the people like her sister and stuff, obviously her sister, my auntie is doing a great job doing a, doing bits for her as well. It's not just me, bear that in mind. Like I'm not trying to take all credit for that. There's other people doing great work too, but just don't have any regrets man like if this is your situation and you're going through something similar do everything you can for them so that when they're gone you can say you at least tried your best the worst thing that i could possibly imagine and i could see it coming from a mile away is that if i was to be like oh no i don't want to see her while she's in this situation i want to remember the good times if i'd have done that and then she would have like died on her own or without her son around her or whatever it may be then i would have heavily regret that and i rec and i recognize that from from a long time, a long time before it got this bad. So just do what you can for the people you love and don't forget the good times you spent together. And also don't waste time on people that wouldn't do that for you, man, because this life is only so long. And while technology may advance and make us live longer, we still deal with the same hardships, obstacles, hurdles. So I think if you can learn anything from me, it's just make the most of the time you've got with the people you love and just do everything you can. Do everything you can to help someone. And if they need you, be there. If they don't want you there, don't be there. Like, don't smother someone if they don't want you to. Me, I'm always honest when people ask me, like, can I help you with anything? Do you need attention? I'm most of the time going to be like, no, I don't need it. But everybody's different. So case by case basis, help the people that need it and be there on standby for the ones that say they don't. So with all that being said, guys, I just wanted to get this off my chest because making a video is like the only way I feel like I can talk to it. I talk to Holly about these things, but 
I feel like sharing them will help the world at least in some way. So if I can do anything with my life to help others get through tough times that I've been through similarly, and I've got tons and tons and tons of like crazy stories, funny stories, sad stories. So if you guys like these kind of videos where I just talk from the heart, let me know. Maybe I'll do some more with some more uplifting topics. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this one, guys. Hopefully, hopefully things go a lot better over the next couple months. But yeah, it's not looking too good on that front. Either way, I'll see you guys in the next video.